Uh, hi everybody, uh, my name is Ryan, as he said. Um, I, my project was looking at the use of primary conjugated antibodies to help better model the heterogeneity of glioblastomas. Um, so the three models we have right now, uh, there's really four. Um, I didn't mention uh, genetically modified mice. Um, but xenografts right now, we have cell lines and we have organoids. Uh, organoids is kind of the method that my lab was working on. Uh, you can think of, um, so kind of the pros of organoids are the heterogeneity you see in these. What I mean by heterogeneity is these, are, these have glial cells, they have uh, neural stem cells, you're seeing neurons as well. Um, they're cheap, they're, they have a 3D morphology that models that of uh, developing brain, um, and they can, as uh, Dr. Patel and I like to say, uh, they can kind of act as a patient avatar, and I'll get into that in a bit. Cons of these, they're uh, in vitro, but they're not yet verified. Um, so kind of, what are organoids? So uh, kind of like one of the coolest things I've ever seen, it's literally a piece of brain tissue that they develop from embryonic stem cells, and um, it fires action potentials, it has neurotransmitters, um, it literally acts as uh, your brain does, in a sense. Um, so we basically, like I said, start from embryonic stem cells, we give them the right transcription factors, right inducing factors, uh, to throw them down a path of uh, the neural pathway. Um, and then what we did with these organoids is around day 30 of their life, we injected them with uh, GBM uh, tumor cells that uh, Dr. Patel um, uh, respected from a patient. And then around day 60 uh, through 90, um, we would snap freeze these organoids. I would then section them, stain them, and image them. Uh, so that's kind of the aim of my project was um, we were trying to basically work on doing co-stains on tissue. So the way we did this was uh, I was given unconjugated primary antibodies. And my goal was to conjugate these antibodies with different fluorescent dyes. Uh, to then go on to co-stain this tissue um, and use these co-stains to understand the heterogeneity of glioblastomas. Uh, the big picture is basically to prove that these uh, cells that we are injecting into glioblastoma, uh, into these organoids are leading to GBM-like growth and um, uh, kind of model the uh, tumor you are seeing in the patient. Um, so. Uh, going through the methods really quick, like I said, I started from unconjugated antibodies and I conjugated them to, conjugated them to specific fluorescent dyes. Uh, up on the left you can see mistakes. Uh, I made, the first time I did this, I made the mistake of adding um, probably like a hundred times the amount of dye that I needed. Uh, but this actually, um, actually helped in the end enhancement in the protocol. Because when I did it right, the, the next time I put in the correct amount of dyes, we didn't see any signal whatsoever. So what I ended up doing is going back and adding a little extra dye to all the uh, aliquots, and when we imaged them again, we saw a signal underneath. So I guess sometimes mistakes can uh, work out for you. Um, and then on the other side, I had to basically take these samples that were frozen in OCT, uh, section them, uh, make about, you know, sit in a, a cold cross at negative 18 degrees, your hands are in there, and uh, for three to four hours, turn a wheel and continue to section tissue. Um, and after that, I would take one of these slides randomly, take one of my primary conjugated antibodies and basically test uh, the concentration of the antibody. So we weren't using too much antibody to the point where we were wasting it, but we weren't using too little where we weren't getting any signal. Um, after that was done, we were then able to uh, kind of go through the, um, they're basically uh, the TSA IFC protocol. This is the one we were trying to get around. Main reason being you can only over, you can only conjugate it with a single primary antibody. Uh, the reason behind that is the secondary antibody isn't, uh, the secondary antibody is the one that has the fluorescent dye conjugated to it. But the secondary antibody is not able to, uh, it's, not able to distinguish between primary antibodies in the sense it's not specific to the primary antibody. So if we were to throw five primary antibodies on here and then throw a secondary antibody, these would all be conjugated by the same secondary and then the same color. So when you image it underneath the scope, you're not able to distinguish between the different uh, locations of the antibodies. 
from the right side, uh, you can see how uh, it's fewer steps. You just overnight with multiple conjugated antibodies. And what you get is a cosine. So here you're seeing bimethin in CD24. And this image is showing the, um, the ability of uh, cosine to account for all the cells within this sample tissue. Uh, in the sense, uh, say we would just stain with bimethin, we would not uh, see this uh, portion of cells lighting up. Um, and so kind of what this tells us is we're seeing high expression of bimethin, um, which kind of mimics that of what you'd see in glioblastoma. It's hydrocellular. Uh, and the CD24 region is part of the organoid. Um, and so this differentiation allows us to see that uh, we are getting uh, something that models that of the GBM. Uh, and this result right here is actually the coolest one out of all of it. This, we, um, Anoop and I, Dr. Patel, sat down and we basically were able to <coughs> provide a preliminary result showing. Um, so basically, the, what we were doing in this portion of the experiment was taking these organisms, injecting them with tumor cells, and what we were looking to try to do is to see if we could get actual uh, tumor growth, so basically get these tumor cells from a human patient actually grow these organoids. And so the organoids themselves naturally express GFP, and so what we were looking for was a GFP negative area, where we were getting a SOX2 positive, uh, uh, SOX2 positive cells, telling us that um, SOX2 positive is uh, expressed in all cells, but especially cancer cells, uh, or tumor cells, uh, and we were getting a high expression of SOX2 in this region where we had a GFP negative. This is telling us that without GFP, we don't have organoid here, but we see a hypercellular region suggesting that we do have tumor growth from those uh, cells we injected into this organoid. So we are kind of on our way to proving that this could be a good model and uh, organoids could be a good model and could act as a patient avatar um, in the future. Uh, and then this was kind of the last portion of the whole um, project, we didn't get to finish it. We really wanted to compare the single cell RNA sequencing. Single cell RNA seq is where you take a, a piece of tissue, basically break it down into single cells, and are able to sequence uh, the RNA uh, within these uh, single cells. And uh, what we wanted to do with that was compare the uh, single cell RNA seq of the tumor itself to this organoid derived tumor to see if we're getting the same expression of genes. Uh, but this is just of the tumor, we never got to the organoid. And so what you're seeing the, uh, right on the left here, this is called a UMAP. This clusters cells based on principal components. Principal components are basically uh, the co-expression of genes, of genes that are normally expressed together. So these clusters represent cells, single cells that seem to be expressing uh, the same type of genes. And so from this, uh, these clusters are labeled uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this heat map, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And what uh, the heat map tells us is it gives us gene markers that are being expressed within these clusters. So, for example, if uh, from that we can say, okay, so in group 0, we see expression, you can't really see it in here, we're seeing EGFR uh, being heavily expressed. So we then do a feature plot, which we type in, okay, look for EGFR, and tell us on the UMAP where this is being expressed. So this is being expressed in the tumor cells. Growth factor is heavily expressed in tumors, as we know. Um, moving on, same idea, we did uh, myelin-based protein. So myelin-based protein we see uh, expressed in oligodendrocytes. So from that, from this feature plot, we're seeing expression in this group. So that's gonna be our oligodendrocytes, and this continues PTPRCs, microglia, uh, we see CD34 in our endothelial cells. Uh, this was actually really cool. This isn't like compared it to the results, but we saw these two cell uh, clusters here that were expressing uh, many of the same genes, but we were able to find two genes that differentiated them. GAD1, which is expressed in GABA uh, types of neurons, we were able to figure out that's going to be your inhibitory neurons. And SLC17A7 is expressed in the vesicle and transport or glutamate, which suggests that's your excitatory neurons. And so this is basically what we want to, this is analysis of the single cell RNA-seq, and we'd like to analyze uh, the organoid derived tumor as well to see if we're getting the same expression. Uh, future goals would be to improve the methods of injecting these tumor, uh, these organoids, these fish to ultimately prove that we do have uh, human tissue in these organoids. 
and continue using the staining method, and finally uh, use single cell RNA seq to compare the organoid uh, and the tumor. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Ellen Brogan, uh, Sandra Ellen Brogan, uh, Anu, uh, Eric Holland, and Sam, although Sam is a USC football fan. Uh, <laughs> We were able to become friends and <laughs> so thank you.